Well, hello, Sandy. Amy, hello. How are you today? But of course we got the Zoom going and I'm like, oh, are my bangs okay? <laughs> I love that. I got groomed. Mom needs to get groomed, you know? How about right, you? Right, right. Um, good, good. We were supposed to close on our house today and it got canceled. It, well, it got postponed. So they had moved it up on Friday. They moved it up. And then today they were like, okay, we're not ready. So then they moved it back. <laughs> so it's like, but all good. Just paperwork and timing. Just paperwork and timing. And I'm like, oh, anyway, we were kind of excited to take possession today, but that's okay. It's all good. You'll be even more excited tomorrow. Yeah. Well, it's going to be in two weeks because we're traveling. Oh, two weeks. Yes. Oh. Because we're traveling from tomorrow for until the 13th. So anyway, it's all good. And speaking of that and traveling, and I just shared something that's kind of personal, um, traveling. And today we're talking about privacy and, you know, somebody that I would probably guess that somebody is going to say, Amy, you shouldn't share that. Um, you know, that we're traveling, I will tell you, there will be people at our place the whole time taking care of the dogs. So it's not like a people at our place. We have uh, an army and light or cameras. So, you know, right. this, I should be more private. I get that a lot, Amy, for me. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. So we're, that's okay. That's, it comes up whenever you tell anybody on social media, you're going on vacation people are like, Oh, don't do that. But, um, I think the people who feel safe do it right now and talking about safe, the whole reason we brought this topic up is the stuff that's been going on over in the UK with Kate Middleton. It was a little bit of uh, this, all this speculation and assumptions and people just really being mean and accusatory of abuse, you know, like I heard something about physical abuse and things like that. And that she was recovering from that. Anyway, what did you hear on that? And, and then to swing that around to privacy. So it was interesting. The whole thing was interesting because we were in London in the middle of all this. Oh, were you? We, we were in London a week before, um, Actually, it was the, we were in London a couple days before she did the picture that had alterations, which don't all pictures have alterations is my only comment on that, but the picture that had alterations, but that just created more speculation, right? And then a week after that, the announcement of her cancer. But when we were there, I would tell you, um, I went in jokingly, like, almost because there were so many memes and there were so many um, jokes out there about what was going on that I was making comments on, Hey, in London doing a a princess, a Kate Welchek and have to be able to find her, you know, just be to me, it was more funny, but in the same sense, I guess I, I pretty much had the opinion that it was funny to be funny because she doesn't deserve privacy because it's to me, the UK royalty are paid influencers. Okay. And you could disagree with that, but I mean, it was interesting to take it all in and get the perspective of people that live there who adore their royalty, but they, they're, they're follow the dollar and you will have the answer. There's all kinds of money that comes in because they are, they are a tourist attraction. They bring in, you know, money from retail everywhere you go. I mean, you can get any kind of shirt that has, you know, King Charles's picture on it and still Princess Diana. And it's, it's a business. And even after reading Harry's book, um, you know, you, you, you hear about how it's really the family business. They own land, but they, they, there's money that exchanges hands. And I have always been of the opinion that because they've chosen to be in a business that they have given up their privacy. So at that time, I thought, seriously, you know, how can you not think you're going to be part of some speculation when you just, you, you're, you're turning on and off when you're in it, when you're, you're an influencer. But I got to tell you, I felt guilty after she came out with her diagnosis thinking, is that really fair? And it gave me a perspective 
to look at it differently. I'm not quite sure where I stand on it. So I'm looking forward to this conversation, but that did create pause for me when I got back and it wasn't a funny meme. And, yeah. and to me, it was like the speculation, the ones that really weren't trying to be humorous, like Twitter humorous, the ones that really were creating drama. They aren't typically people that I would converse with on subject matter anyway. Um, yeah, I don't. So what are your thoughts? That's kind of my mind dump on the thing. As a <laughs> that, was, that was an amazing mind dump. I love it. And I think like if it would have been joking, you know, Princess Kate watch and, you know, just in fun, I think there probably wouldn't have been as much offense to it as where the speculation was going to dark places. And, you know, this um, entitlement to knowing all of their secrets. And I think that's kind of, you know, we all have secrets. Some of us have public lives. If just because you have a public life, does that mean you're not entitled to have any secrets and any personal privacy? You know, that's where I was a little like, I don't, I think they're, you are entitled to some privacy. I think that's something that people really want. And um, one of the stories I was reading about this this morning, and there was a great Vogue article, and they were talking about the stuff that had happened with Kate, this whole thing. They brought up Princess Diana when she was 19. There was a whole discussion about her virginity when they were getting engaged. It was like in the tabloids speculating and trying to figure out, you know, has she had a serious boyfriend? And so they were digging and it was the conversation. And I'm like, that's, that is just boundaries that shouldn't be crossed, I think. You know, I think where I came around to all this is I think everybody owns their privacy and it's not up to anybody else to say whether they deserve it or not. Yeah. I, you know, that whole deserving, well, they did this and now they they lost it. You know, it's not theirs to have. I think no matter what, we can fight for our privacy and it's up to us and we there should be no one thing, whether it be our birthright whether it be the type of job we have. If I turned around tomorrow and said, you know, I'm just going to stop sharing. I might not, or, or are people going to come back and say, but you've given your story openly for 15 years. You don't have that right or diss me for it. And they can do that. But I think at the end of the day, it's, you can't take away somebody's, you, a person's privacy belongs to them and it's up to them when they want to share and when they don't want to share. And I think everybody else just needs to chill the hell out and worry about their own business. Right. Yeah. And I agree. I think it's that making that choice, having, being able to make that choice and not having other people make that choice for you. So I'm going to tell you a personal story. Um, I was with my sister a few weeks ago and she told me something and it wasn't a big deal. We were just talking about stuff and and she told me something and I was excited for her. Mm -hmm. And I told my mom, I was talking to my mom and I mentioned it to my mom and cause I was excited for her. Okay. And, uh, the, my sister texted me and she was like, you told mom. And, and I will say, I told mom. And then I said, you need to call her. So about this, like call her because I wanted her to have the conversation, but I was I, I shared it. I probably, and I shouldn't have shared it as the whole point of it, but I really appreciated my sister calling me out on it. She's like, you told mom. And I, and I was, I got it a little defensive, like, what's the big deal. And then I was like, you're right. I shouldn't have done that, but I was excited for you. I wasn't sharing it to hurt her. I was just sharing it in my excitement, which is still a boundary that I shouldn't have crossed. But the good news is she said something, right? Because that's the other thing back to, I'm making the comment about me and, whoops, do not disturb on, but there are many times that I will include stories of my kids, Garrett, you know, and I've got to remember when am I crossing a boundary and when am I not and asking permission. And it's not a black and white thing, Amy, because 
I also know people that are almost um, obsessive about their privacy. Maybe it wasn't, was it you and I that were talking about this? You have to stop me. Somebody was telling me that uh, there, there was somebody, yes, you were telling me about this, about scrubbing their Google. And I have people in my life that are like that. And, you know, I'm not to mention that I, you know, I can't even mention them in passing because that would be even mentioning their name or including them on a picture would be an invasion of their privacy. Now that one to me, I, it's been interesting because it's hit, it's a fan, one's a family member and it's hit because we are working on like the family website, things like that, or like the sharing of pictures on a family Facebook page. That's very private. So I'll use that as an example. But that person, while they were in adulthood, had chose to be in a family picture, but then doesn't want the family picture on just that family website or family Facebook page. And my comment was, you agreed to be in the picture. I am not spending all kinds of time and energy to erase your page. Website I get, okay? Because then anybody can access that. But I I'm not taking you off of family pictures because now you've decided you don't want to be in any photos. I'm just not doing that. Right. Because yeah. you made a decision. Yeah. There's a there's a line, right? There is a line. And there's there are reasons. I don't know what this person's reason is to have the privacy. Um I will tell you, my brother is very in, he's very techy and he is into privacy for uh let me think. I don't, I can't, I don't know how to phrase it. I just know that he is into um, people not being able to find him like telemarketers and all that stuff, not like the government can find him, but you know, <laughs> he wants to keep everything private. And he shared a website with us that he was like, listen, if your name is out there and you're not protecting, you have to go onto this website and get it pulled. But he was like, I can tell you how much you bought your house for. I can tell you, like he was going through all this stuff that he could tell me. And I was like, right, that's kind of freaky. Like that all this stuff was out there. And I can't remember, this was a conversation we had a while back. And it's I, true though, because I had a banker friend tell me that I could look up everything about you. And it is yeah. freaky, but Amy, I'm not going to spend eons. Of, this, this is my personal, back to my personal privacy. I got better things to do. And if somebody knows all that stuff, go for it. That's my, back to my privacy is mine. It's not something I choose to spend my time on, but then I've got to be respectful of what other people do and don't want for their privacy within life. Right. right, right. And you, the assumptions that we make, like I think it's fairly normal to share a picture on social media. Like to me, it's, I don't even think about it, but there are things that we would think are normal that other people are like, oh no, that is not normal, you know, to share, um, to share pretty much anything. There's some people who don't want anything shared. I, um, but then we fall into the secrets. So now I was trying to balance this with like family if you want your privacy, but you have relationships with people and you're keeping secrets, um, then I think it turns into a little bit of a, why are you keeping those secrets? Why do you want that privacy? And some of it turns into fear or shame. There's something that you're, there's some reason that you don't want to share what's, what's going on. And so you have to kind of internally dig into that. Mm -hmm. It's, it, it's a good reminder to me to just err on the side of respecting someone's privacy versus trying to analyze whether I want to. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. And not assuming that everybody's like us, like right. we don't all think the same thing. So with privilege and privacy, I have a question. I get a lot people that are believed to have privilege either because they became famous, they were royals, they were born into it, they were born into money. I mean, Paris Hilton, whoever, you know? And because of that, they don't deserve privacy. And a comment that I heard that stayed with me was after I read, and this isn't just privacy, some of it's privacy, because his Harry's big beef is 
not getting any privacy and being um, harassed, you know, by the press. I tell you, that's probably his biggest beef. But after reading his book, I made a comment that I had empathy for him because he did not does he 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 did not choose to be born in the family. He did not choose to be a prince. This is the life he got. And on top of it, you know, he forget about the whole prince thing. Think about everything that came to him. And then he lost his mother young. And the person said, how can you have empathy for somebody with privilege? And I thought, so you lose your right to empathy. And yeah. because you have because you were born into privilege. And so part of this too, privacy, privilege, what you are entitled to as a human, back to privacy being, I'm saying it's a human right, right? It's your decision. So do you lose that when there's privilege? Am I thinking about this wrong that I got a little bucky thinking, why does he, why does he lose rights, right? Because he was born in privilege. Yeah, I, I don't think, anybody loses rights, no matter what their life circumstances is. There, right. are, there are certain rights that we should all have and privacy is one of them. Like just, and that's where I think of Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey, you know, but we've talked about them before, but in Kansas city, like when they hit a restaurant, it comes to my feet. Like I see pictures of them at a restaurant here in Kansas city and to the point where I went out one time and we went to a restaurant that they had gone to. They had a drink named after Taylor because that's the drink she had ordered when she was there. And like they had completely, not completely, they had changed their menu to highlight that Travis, like I think there was a steak dinner or something that Travis had ordered. I was just like, really? Like, again, where's the privacy in that? Like if they had this whole printout of what she ate, I'm sure there would be people saying, oh my gosh, I can't believe she ate that. That's not healthy. You know what I mean? Like there would be people judging her. And I'm like, where's the privacy in that? And I don't know if they asked her permission or their permission to do that. I hope they did. Wouldn't you have to? Well, I don't know. Would you? Cause you know, I, don't like, know. I think there's restaurants all over the place that have things named after people like they're famous people and at least here in Kansas city, there's lots of that. I don't huh. know if they have permission. I don't but, know. It's just an interesting concept because, you know, here, Amy, you and I, you know, we used, I used their picture on the thumbnail and some of the, you know, again, we're promoting the podcast, but I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know either. I was, I've been pondering a lot with secrets, like, you know, well, and to say this about that menu, Taylor at one point had an eating disorder from my understanding. I read that like way back, she was very thin, you know, and, and I don't know if that's true or not, but when I read that, I was like, okay, so you're, if we're posting that and it's tied to this health, like, how does that feed into and then there was a comment about her and Travis's bodies on their vacation recently in the Bahamas yeah. because they, they aren't real thin, you know what I mean? So it just, I'm like, cut them a break. Like they do not need the scrutiny <laughs> and invasion of privacy. I think it's all invasion of privacy. And it's something uh, everybody deserves. And Right. I completely agree. So this last week I watched a TV show and it's, uh, apples never fall. Have you read that book? Oh, I want to. And I want to see the TV show. It has a net bending in it. Correct. Yes. I highly recommend. I loved the book. Okay. And then when I saw the show, I was like, oh so my go gosh. in that order. Cause it made me put it higher on the list. Cause, uh, is it Leanne Moriarty? Who's yes. the most yes. I love her books. Yes. Same, same. And put up my list. Okay. So this book is a lot about secrets. I'll tell you that because there's a lot of secrets that people have kept for a long time and something happens. And of course, that's the story is all of these secrets come out. 
And I was, as I was watching it, I was like, all right, so where is the boundary between a secret and privacy? And I've, I haven't been able to figure that out. Like, when is it okay to keep, have privacy? And when is it not okay to keep us, to have privacy? And you shouldn't keep a secret. I do not know the answer to that, but I'm just trying to figure every, it out. I think it falls in the, it depends, right? Meaning, are you hurting somebody? Do they have a right to know? You know, um, yeah. let's just say a child's adopted. And they never told the child they're adopted. And then they took a DNA test and found out about it. Well, it was yeah. a secret. It was private. I don't know. I mean, that that kind of falls in. Is it the child's right to know? Is it? And again, I'm not, not for us to debate the answer, but just saying a lot of times family secrets and things are the, the book I'm reading right now is it's called The Yellow House. And it's. Um, New Orleans and an African-American family, but she talked about, she goes through her family history going back a couple of generations and how her mom was pregnant with a brother uh, when bio dad, he, the, the dad had, I think it was a dad before he had passed away. And so it was people were speculating, uh, was it really his child because he was in the army and it couldn't be his child. And the mom's just like, you know what? Some secrets just aren't worth rehashing. And that was her, her answer to it is, you know, the, whoever the bio dad didn't matter to her. And she said, nobody will ever know. And mom just put a bend to it. If it, she heard enough about it. And once my, you know, stepdad was in the ground, she said, there's nothing worth talking about this. So you guys can all <laughs> find it. But I don't know They're there. Maybe it's the person who's keeping the secret has to make the determination on whether that privacy that they're keeping is worth the upheaval, upheaval and hurt if it gets out, right? They've got to weigh that. So maybe maybe the answer is privacy still belongs to the person who also knows the secret, but they have to take into account the ramifications of their decision. Right. And it, it impacts others. And it's going to hurt now or later. Right. So... Yeah. I don't think secrets, secrets usually don't stay hidden. That's what I would say. They usually come out somehow. <laughs> Your motive is too, you know, sometimes secrets are people don't like to keep secrets because they want to get credit or they want to be the person in the know. Secrets are tough because most people want to hear them and they're just so alluring. You know, why do we like mysteries so much? It's the thrill of figuring it out, right? And so secrets are tough because they're so desired to know the answer that you have all kinds of um, bad characteristics that can come out, right? Yeah. The person who tells it, the person who embellishes it, the person who wants to hurt someone with it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. And, but then there's this balance of privacy where you just want to keep it private and not tell anybody. You don't want anybody to know about it and you are entitled to that. Mm -hmm. But then also you have to take it. If the, the secret gets out for whatever reason, then you have to accept the ramifications of your choice. Yeah. If it impacts other people, right? Yeah. So I just revealed a secret to my husband. And it's not a major secret. It was something happened the first month that I lived here while he was in St. Louis when his mom was sick. And it was something that would only happen in the city. <laughs> I'll just say that. And so I didn't tell him about it because he had literally been here one night and then he went to St. Louis and I didn't tell him. It was a funny story. It was not anything bad. It was a very funny and, uh, but I'm not going to tell it because it makes the city look <laughs> So, so it was funny and, um, we were here with friends and I was laughing and I wanted to share this story and I looked at Tom and I'm like, so just so you know, I never told you this because <laughs> I was like, I didn't want you to be concerned about moving here and living here. So I had to let it like go for a while until he felt comfortable. And then I kind of forgot about it. <laughs> so I was like, Oh, can't see secrets. Just, you can't keep them. At least I can't, I'm not good at keeping secrets. I'm good at keeping secrets for other people. If they tell me it's a secret, but then not 
my secrets I I'm not good at keeping. If there's stories that are funny and involve me or just anything can be deprecating, it doesn't matter. I'm fine with that. Sometimes I have, I've had secrets of um, things that I did anonymously to benefit somebody else that I didn't want them to know about that I'll go to my grave because, and I've learned, I don't, don't share with anybody because who cares, right? It's only a good thing. Twice I had shared with like one other person and it freaking got back to them, you know? And it's like, what's the point? Why even tell one person? And that's, that kind of falls on that random act of kindness. If you really want it to be random. And um, so there are things like that. And the whole reason I'll go to my grave is back to the lesson in telling one person, people just can't be trusted, Amy, darn it. Completely agree. Um, it and just, and they and might we, not even mean it. They might forget, you know, they might forget it's a secret. It's not. Yes. Oh my gosh. That happened one time. I was working with a family and a, a reporter wanted to do a story. And I was, and was asking me about an opportunity for a story. And I brought it to my client and I said, are you interested? Okay. And she was like, yeah, I'll do it. She was, very, you know, I will say her situation wasn't that bad. That's why I was like, oh, you're just like a normal family. You know what I mean? Just needing a little help with organizing their space. And so, um, but so she was going through a divorce and she shared this with the reporter, but apparently she said off the record, I don't know. I, did, I missed that whole conversation, but it made it into the newspaper and she was so livid. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I was. And so it's kind of like, if you don't want something out there, then don't say it because <laughs> well, people forget or, and I don't know if the reporter intentionally forgot. I, I have no idea the circumstances. I don't think to anybody else, it was a big deal, but she was like, a lot of my friends do not know that I'm going through or lots of, lots of acquaintance, whatever. They don't know the situation. So anyway. So that's interesting. You're talking about work and I know we're, we're getting short on time, but with work, uh, I don't know if you've ever had to sign non-disclosure agreements, but they freak me the hell out because I don't even want to say like, Oh, where were you at? Nowhere. You know, even <laughs> though it's about not giving up trade secrets, you would think I work for the CIA sometimes because you know, if I sign something like that, I'm going to be very, very careful. Right. And I worked on a big project and they, they handed out NDAs like they handed out Kleenex and everybody had to sign an NDA and they were so overcompassing. And part of it was, I thought, this is silly. What the few things that you're afraid of, you're, you're kicking yourself. You're kicking yourself because you can have other people promote the good things you're doing, but everybody's so darn afraid because it was so over reaching that nobody talked about it, even with each other. And uh, it didn't, it created more harm than good because they were too overly private about something that was not creating a nuclear war item or yeah. otherwise, you know, sometimes I think we think we, us, our businesses, sometimes we think we need this privacy because we're so ultra important. But at the end of the day, do people really even care about some of the stuff, you know, are we, yeah, it's, it's funny you that you mentioned shoes, that. but yes. What's is the privacy doing more harm than good, which I do think transparency and vulnerability that is all like, you can't have those. And those are really good qualities to have, but you can't have those. If you're hanging on to privacy, that's, right. it doesn't exist. Um, it's funny because I was meeting with a company last week and they were showing me their mission vision and they were, they had this whole slide deck and it was wonderful. I was like, wow, what a great company. And it's funny because the CEO kept saying, I don't think anything's proprietary here. We're going to have to do an NDA, but it, it, like they were kept bouncing or maybe not, maybe it's okay. But he was, he was very like trying to decide the whole time, like each slide, it was like, not each slide, but occasionally a slide would come up and be like, I don't know. And then I'm like, trust me. I'm like, this is all good stuff. And I'm only seeing the good. And I'm like, all I will be saying is what a great company because of this. 
Right. Anyway, it was kind of funny. All right. Well, this is a great conversation. I don't know that we resolved anything. <laughs> but hey, it's good for two people that are podcasting, talking about everything to understand <laughs> that, you know, privacy and privilege are two separate things. And every person, whether they're more like us or not, is entitled to make the own, their own choice in privacy, right? Right. Right. And nobody's entitled to other people's information. Right. And given yeah. that, Amy, we need to disclose a very open item that there will not be a podcast next week, right? Yes. Yes. Thank you for reminding us or everybody, because we are skipping next week. So you've heard Enjoy us all talk about travel and moving. And uh, Amy and I decided rather, as we looked at our calendars, trying to figure out how we were going to do all this in a crazy month of April, we're like, we can give ourselves some grace and come out strong in May with right. uh, four weeks and then enjoy a summer. So we will not be dropping on April 25th. Very good. All right. All right, Thank Amy. You. We will talk soon. All right. Bye. Bye.